So we have our source here, um, wildflowers and trees and grass. And so one of the things I thought what, that was really important to emphasize in this lesson, and this is why I'm kind of repeating the subject, is what to do when you've got all this repetitive stuff going on. Uh, so I'm going to show you some ways as we construct this landscape, I'm going to show you that we do a lot less detail than you think. And we're going to be focusing on different ways to lay the detail out. Like I said, Jean, if you want to challenge yourself, change this up a little bit, you can bring this down a little bit further, add a mountain in the back. You can change the color of the sky. You can change the color of the flowers. You can stick a tree in if you want to um, play around with that. But this is a really important practice because there's a lot of brush techniques that are very counterintuitive to what you'll think about when you think about doing stuff like this. Um, so let's get started. This is a mostly green landscape. So how, and we're not even going to draw. Oh, oh, you're gonna do that one today, Jean? Great. Does that work? Yeah, shit, yeah, yes. So that kind of combines same, what we did last night with what we did last week. Do the same construction, do the same construction. Yeah. So start with uh, burnt sienna. And then, yes, absolutely. That's gorgeous. You know, I saw that one. I was thinking it's, about it. Anyway. It's Oregon. It's, or, oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> I love my state so much. <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, follow along with the techniques. So this is a mostly, um, let's see, I'm just trying to figure out how to set up here. This is a mostly green landscape with some flowers. So yeah. we're gonna do an underpainting. We're not even going to um, draw it with a pencil. We're gonna draw with our, our paintbrush today. And the only paintbrush we're gonna be using is this big one, the one inch. The only one we're gonna be using is this one. Um, so uh, put away anything else. And I will, I, I will bring out a couple just to show you what will, will, will wreck what, you know, what our instincts are and what I want you not to do. <laughs> but we're going to start by just drawing with this. And what color should we start with? If everything here is green, what color should we start with? Red. Yes. We're going to do burnt sienna. You're going to see that a lot of times my go-to for nature, particularly for nature, but for a lot of things is burnt sienna. I'm trying to get this up so you can see the whole thing. And here's how simple this drawing is. I mean, in its base level. Uh, go ahead and get yourself some water on your brush. I'm getting some transparent, I'm oh, sorry. This is transparent redox, it burnt sienna over here. Okay. Uh, I'm making sure my brush is wet, but not dripping because I want to be able to kind of load paint. You know your brush is doing well if you can put paint on it and it doesn't drip off. See how I'm holding it straight up? So it's wet, but it's not, the paint isn't like dripping off. And then it's, it's literally this simple. Above the halfway point, because that's where our, here's our horizon line. And then here's our Tree line. That's like the drawing. Wow, huh? Amazing. I mean, we're gonna do more, but like for our painting purposes, it's fairly simple. So go ahead and sketch that in. And then you wanna take, cause this is quite dark, we're gonna take, we're gonna color in, <laughs> color in like a coloring book. With this, with, uh, with this burnt sienna, you're gonna color in with a lot of, notice I haven't gone back to my um, water. My brush is still pretty dry because I wanna really get paint on there. Pretty dark. This tree line, this is fairly dark. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get a little water, now I'm gonna get a little water on my brush, squeeze it off, squeeze it off a little bit. And then I'll go this way, kind of, I'll go horizontally. If you find it's struggle, you're struggling to get like um, your your paint to spread, dip your brush in the water again. You can. Oh hi. 
Hermes. We'll see how long Hermes can handle it here. And I want this to be pretty dark. So these are pretty dark. We're gonna make them even darker. And then your last job. So now you've got a little bit of paint on your brush. Dip your brush in the water. So now you can see like the water kind of dripping off and do a lighter layer for the sky of orange for the sky. You can see that. So this area is lighter. If you get too much uh, paint, it's too dark, you can take your paper towel and kind of dab it off. It'll still leave some. So our aim is to cover the whole canvas. We want the, the green sections to be fairly dark and fairly thick. And then I'm going to have you practice on another sheet of paper the techniques. While this is drying, we're going to practice the mixing. So we're a little bit handling grasses today, but you're going to find there's very little emphasis on actual grass strokes. We'll have the grass in there, but it's more about how to create this mix of crazy flowers, right? And you know I'm not going to tell you to paint every one. That would make you all insane, I think. By the way, very, I wanted to tell you guys also, you did a freaking great job last week with the mountains. I was really impressed with everyone's. There was not one person who did not totally get that and get it right. So I think you should feel really proud of yourself. This group is super. Here, I'll send a picture of this. So Diana, thank you so much for the help um, on the white balance. It turns out it's a Zoom problem. I went oh, in was. and fixed my can. It is, yeah, we just cannot, it, they're just not gonna let us see color. Um, I wonder wow. if it's because I have a lot of green. Yeah. And I have been noticing it in Marie's class on Sundays where she has a lot of color that like a lot, like it, everything is dulled down significantly. So unfortunately, I'm going to be looking. I mean, I'm going to talk to Zoom about this actually, because I think that sucks. Yeah, it does. I think what I, it's curious to me because you know, you can, we can see this orange fairly well. We can see the green fairly well, but it's when we get too many colors together that I think things start to shut down. It's the light color. So it is, I mean, it is light. It is a white balance can, but I can't yeah. correct it. Like I, it's not from my, yeah. So I think I'm going to email Zoom or something and just yeah, say, you should. hey, this is ridiculous. Um, we should be able to see these. Yeah, something shifts um, with the light colors. You're right. And it becomes more black and white. So interesting. So everybody, go ahead and if you want me to take a look at this, go ahead if you feel pretty confident that you've got it. Um, I've just sent you a picture, so I'm going to move this over to the side. So a lot of this a lot of what we're doing is brush technique, right? A lot of what we're learning is mixing and, and how to use our brush. And that I think is, and so each of these exercises is designed to show you different things. I have, like I said, I have a lot of people tell me, um, ask me, oh, how do I do, uh, how do I do trees? How do I do skin color? How do I do flowers? How do I do glasses? You know, how do I do yada yada? And um, I feel like, so I'm trying to pick as many subjects as possible so that you start to have experience with them. But note that each subject really has its own set of marks. The marks that we made last week in the mountains um, some of them were the same, but they have the mountains have a lot more ed hard edges than say what we're going to be doing today. Today has very little hard edges, might maybe none, maybe no hard edges. So, um, so it's interesting to just as we start to experiment and also how to think about it. Know that like eventually I'm going to show you how to paint pretty much everything. <laughs> And, and then draw everything later, later in the year. And um, 
And the idea of this is that you start to get a vocabulary uh, for, oh, maybe I can paint these flowers, you know, these uh, waves the, a little bit the way I painted those flowers. Maybe, you know what I mean? Like that's kind of the idea. So let me know. Yes. Um, and when you guys are ready, you'll see I have a sample sheet of paper. I might as well start putting my colors down. You guys continue on. I'm going to build the palette and I will label it and send it to you. Oh, I never really do more than that. <laughs> You've got, I'm going to say it, but don't worry. I'm going to absolutely make sure I write it down and give you time. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen in this class is that I'm moving to um, oil in next week is our last week in acrylic. Then I am going to move to oil. That does not mean you have to move to oil. And in fact, if you're new to painting, my recommendation is you stay with acrylic. The techniques are basically the same. If you like oil, if you have, you know, if you're interested in learning oil and you're and you're you're kitted up to do oil, definitely we should do it. You should do it, and there's a supply list. But um, it is totally okay to stay with acrylic. A lot of the techniques are similar. The techniques to building the painting are similar, and I'd rather you stay with what you're familiar with. But for those who are interested in oil, that will be starting soon. By the nice way, Leah, do you, are you familiar with um, Daniel Smith's yes. oil that mixes with water? Uh, you know, not. I've never used the water-based oils. Um, I've heard good things. I know people who use nothing but that. Uh, they like it. It's probably expensive. Um, it's, uh, well, I just think it's Being like Daniel anything Smith. else. You have to, I mean, it's not just Daniel Smith who does it. There are other people who, mm. water-based oils are, are now a thing. And yeah, if you're worried about solvents and things. I'll, t I'll spend a little time talking about the things that you need for oil. Maybe I'll do that th at the end of this class to okay. help you talk. Hi, Emma. Emma, we're just here sketching out. You don't even have to pencil draw this, just sketching out a simple landscape. So it's dark here where the trees are. It's lighter here. This is all burnt sienna. You can go ahead and start structuring that if you want to, or you could just watch if you want to um, and pick it up later. So let me label this for you. This is cad yellow, white. I put Quinn red up here, which is a cool color, but you can put any red you want up here just for, oh, hello. Hermes is here kind of wanting to jump. Okay, I can see. I may have to stop for a minute and switch him out, put him into the apartment. Hold on. Ready and green. Oh boy. Um, burnt sienna. I'm going to take pictures of these. I have been understanding recently how much the zoom screen does not capture color. So definitely look to these photo sources on the thread. Here we are. Sorry, for some reason that shared us. Let me try that. Hi, kitty. All right, so here they are. If you look up close, you can see the labels. We've got cad yellow. And notice, once again, I have my paints kind of on the side so that I can start kind of pulling down and leaving my paint piles a little bit undisturbed as I start to make different mixes. Uh, the first mix we're going to make, as always, with uh, landscapes. And I can do this with a palette knife. Let's see. Um, is a dark is a dark green, and though you can experiment with your dark green, you can do one of two things. You can take some viridian green here or whatever green you have, and mix it with burnt sienna to create a darker green. Or you can try mixing it with your other red to see what happens. So see now I have 
I can come over here. This is my quinacridone red. That's a very cool red. So, oh, and there's a lot too much red in there. So now I have to go in and add more green to kind of balance it out. If you find that you've added too much of the red and, and it's looking more red than or purple than it is green, uh, just add more green in. You want this to be green. There we go. So I have two pretty uh, different colors here. You can decide which one you want to use and then I'll test them to see how they look on my, let's see, I'll put this down here so you can really see this. This is an old testing sheet, so I'm just going to paint right over it. So here is my Quinn Red and Ultramarine and Green and Viridian Green. Um, this is with Burnt Sienna. So the Burnt Sienna one is a little bit warmer. You can, even on the Zoom screen, you can see it. Um, and then, and, and let's compare that to just straight Viridian Green. So go ahead and lay three swatches down on your thing. And here, I'll even label these. So this is Viridian Green plus Sienna. This is Viridian Green plus um, Quinn Red, Cool Red. And this is just Viridian Green. And I'll take a picture and you'll see, you can even see here that this green on its own is it's not natural color. It is not nature. So all of our nature here, let's get a good close up here. So all of our nature uh, greens, our natural greens, our grasses, our trees, virtually everything has, no, everything. Everything has green, everything has a touch of red in it. So when you're mixing, you're always for tree color, your or green color in nature, you're always adding a little bit of red to it. You have options. You can play with this kind of red or this kind of red. Uh, they can be different because different reds will do different things as we have been learning. But the key is your green always has to have red. And once you've done that, I want you to kind of lay out just for practice a little bit of your red and green color kind of on your canvas like this. We're kind of creating a little mini scene. And Jean, once again, since you're doing a more complicated scene, you don't have to do this. I don't think you did this last night anyway. I think you just went right into the painting. So you launch into the painting if you, if you feel Ooh. ready. Uh, and give me a shout if you have questions as you're going through to remember Will what do. to do. Thanks. Yeah. So see how I'm kind of creating, so I'm just kind of painting a block of this green. I actually mixed some different ones. So yeah, is there any water on your... Um... Yeah, there's a little bit of water. There's always a little bit of water. Okay. Yeah, but not too much. This is just practice, right? So yeah, thank you for asking that. That's a great question. Um, how often does I, do I go back and get water? So here, is here, I'll put this up just so you can really see it. So I'm creating on this, going just right over the top of this other stuff. I'm creating this kind of area that's a little bit like this so that we can start practicing some technique. So you guys go ahead and do that. Do your mixing, mix your green, lay the three different, lay different greens down, greens with different reds, lay down the green itself just to see how it looks. Spend a little time with the mixing here. I want you to start to, you'll start to see, you might uh, be somebody who appreciates a cooler, right? Uh, tree line, cooler color. So maybe you like a cool red. Maybe you like something warmer. Maybe you like a combination of both. You're gonna see that I'm gonna start with my mixing using the palette knife and then I just immediately jump to using a brush for mixing. I'll talk about that as we go along. I'm very much a mixer on the canvas. That means I mix something with my brush, I lay it on and if it doesn't look right, I quickly grab the other color with my brush and pull it in and mix it before it dries. Um, that Some people really like that, other people don't like that. <laughs> and, and that's okay. 
Um, Let's see. Nice, Needy. So Needy, your uh, this color over here is a little bit too red. You need to add more green to that. Otherwise, looks pretty good. Good testing. I appreciate this, you guys. I appreciate seeing your testing. You don't have to send it in if you don't want to, but it, it helps me to see what you're doing so I can help you adjust. As you'll know, drawing and painting is a lot of adjustments. Hello, Bubby. Who are you? Hermes is looking at me like he wants me to play with him. <laughs> now we're now. doing something else. Now that I'm doing something else, he's like, what, what, what? How can it be more important than me? Right. <laughs> it was really cute. Uh, a, couple, a couple of BuzzFeed people joined us yesterday, and one of them had this, what looked like an enormous dog which I realized when I taught BuzzFeed, she was in the original sample class we did in November, in November. So that's what, like four months ago? And the dog was tiny then. He was just a oh, baby wow. I mean, now. And he had grown like so huge in these wow. two months. Leah. What kind of dog was he? Yes, a uh, lab, totally cute. Mm. Yes. So we need, we need to color this sheet with this red plus green. Or red this plus greenest, bronzer, yeah, or this just... sort of dark green, this sort of dark green. Cover, cover the sample sheet. Not the whole thing, okay, as red, you can see. Sorry, here. okay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So red plus green. Okay, yeah, red, red plus, plus green. green. Sorry, red plus yeah, green. Okay. not the bronzer, okay. Yeah, uh, you could use, burnt sienna is considered a red. So okay. bur actually, burnt sienna is an interesting one because it can be considered both an orange. Thanks for bringing that up, Needy, because that's a great point. I consider burnt sienna a red in this case. And then when I mix it with blue, I consider it an orange. So burnt sienna okay. has the capacity to go both ways. <laughs> it can be either red or orange, um, as opposed to red or orange, which, are, which can be fairly distinctly different things. Um, it, yeah, so it could be green and burnt sienna, or it could be green and red, whichever color you like the best. Because that's going to be the color you're going to put as the darks on your painting. You have a choice. Let's see. Yeah, that looks like a cooler red you've got there, Olga. Is that right? Nice, deep, rich green. Um, sorry, you... Leah. Hmm. I, the green, what do we do with it? We're only mixing it for now or we're putting it you're on You're mixing it and then you're, la the green and red you're mixing and then you're putting on a sample sheet like this. Oh, a sample sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the so way, you do you have an opinion between l light, uh, light, is it, no, is it, uh, light oak, is it ochre or? Yellow, or you mean yellow ochre? Is it, no, uh, raw, was it umber then, raw? So raw umber. One was light and one was raw. Raw, raw umber and burnt umber, is that what you're talking about? No, oh, it's one of these. I will not figure it out, I'll ask you figure then, sorry. It out and, fig, yeah, figure it out and tell me. Very nice, Annika, nice mixing. Uh, Annika, you've got a little too much red in here, so you're getting more brown. Okay. Right, then you yeah. really want a dark, rich green. So okay. that means if, you're, if your mix is turning out too red, thank you for sending this in, you guys, this is so great. Mm -hmm. Now I can really, I can really help you. The more I, you show me, the more I can really, I can really help. Leah, can you tell me what colors you're mixing again? Sorry, I'm catching up. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so on the palette, Emma, is yellow, a red, any red you want. I have a Quinn red here, a cool red, ultramarine blue, viridian green, and burnt sienna. So the color I'm mixing right now on the sample sheet, right, is viridian green and red. So you can pick viridian green and burnt sienna, which, which reads as a red, or viridian green and your red, which you put down. Try mixing them. What we're going for is a rich dark, which we're then laying on this sample sheet. I went to um, 
uh, the the one art shop that's still open in Berlin at the moment. Oh and, yeah. Um, to try and get some more colours, and basically, the only colour off your list that I could get was cadmium yellow. <laughs> All of the other colors. I mean, it's a big art shop. It's like a sort of supermarket art. Are they shop. out? Are they out of color? No, they they're not allowed. Out? Basically, um, under <clears throat> under the lockdown rules, they only bookshops are allowed to stay open in Germany. Wow, but I mean, and so because they have a selection of books, they've kept open the sort of book corner. Arts, the, the book, right, right, right. And they've had to cordon the whole of the rest of the shop off. How but bizarre. they've obviously. They've kept like a few shelves of paints available, wow. but in that in that rack of paints that they had, they just didn't have much of a selection. They just didn't have much of a selection. That's okay. Do what you yeah. can, and then maybe uh, I'm gonna I might go into um, a couple of the Amazon country sites. See if I can put together a. Sometimes Amazon will let me put together a shopping list, so I can. Yeah, the problem like, is I, can... I don't shop on Amazon, so right. I, so... I could... It would be easier if I did, but I I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> but it seems like paints are one of the things now that people are at home. They do a lot of painting, so there is a shortage of art supplies. There is a shortage of art supplies in general, which is kind of awesome. That's really nice. Uh, all these mixes are looking pretty good, you guys. So go ahead and kind of lay a bunch out on your sample sheet. You, you'll notice we're laying this right out on on white or you know whatever whatever you have underneath it doesn't have to be white you can see i've got samples from last week uh this is what i used last week so i'm just going right over the top um because i want you once we get this down i want you to start practicing some of the the painting moves we're going to use the brush moves we're going to use to make this painting work yeah is my mix fine what's that uh, the queen red and viridian I like, do you like Hi. it? How do you feel about it is the more important question. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I was just practicing from your video before we started. Oh, so nice. then, uh, so I, yeah, so I had only gotten like till the sky bit and okay. I, then the class started. Right, so right. I don't know, it was looking nice there, but I'm not sure. It's just looking a bit darker here. So I just wanted, uh, dark, to, I think wanted the you to darker take it once. The, this is a great question. The darker, the better. So in yeah. acrylic and oil painting, the darker, the better, because we lay it down and then we okay. can put lights on top. So even if it feels too dark to you, lay it down. It's great. Yeah. So I like it. I think it's quite beautiful. Okay. Um, Media, are you just working on, why, why is the buckling happening there? Are you working on paper? Yeah, it is a paper actually, just a loved okay. one. All right. All right. So, um, just do it. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> it's interesting to see what like substrates, what surfaces can handle paint, and which ones just like you know fall up. <laughs> it's a big yeah. It's it's you know it's a, it's a, it's a backside of a letter actually. It's, oh, perfect. It's just for practice. <laughs> it's so that's just no use yes, to me. You know? Yes. 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 Don't get too precious about this. As you can see, yeah. I've like sort of designated about five sheets for of, of canvas for um, continual practice over the top. You could do that also so you don't reuse it, but it's uh, whatever you wanna do is fine. This is just practice. We're gonna be practicing brush strokes. And I feel like you guys are about, are you guys about ready to jump in there? Let me, let me, so I'm gonna clean out my, cleaning off my brush so that I get most of the green off. I might have to dip my brush in water twice to really do that. I want to get the green off because here's the thing about all this detail. I'm not going to ask you to paint every leaf. I'm going to ask you to pay attention to the edge where the sky, this light area, meets the dark area of the trees. I'm going to ask you to pay attention to where the grass meets the trees because there's a contrast here. And then you're going to see, as we go down, we're gonna get into virtually no detail until we get down to about here, okay? And then there's very little detail that we need. Um, so really, this is a practice in working edges. 
Okay, and that edges, if you can get this in your head, edges are where we can see where one area meets another. Sometimes it's because uh, it's a light versus dark. Sometimes there's a transition in um, mark making, right? This is kind of ragged here, right? Sort of soft against the sky. Um, so where we paint, we don't paint every, we don't paint every leaf, but we do paint edges. And we're gonna use this big brush to do everything. You're, you think you need a little brush right now to try and paint all this. And if you try to paint all this, it's gonna look terrible. It really is. Um, so my goal is show you how to use this big brush effectively. Um, so that's what we're practicing today. So more soft edges, but in a very sort of uh, distinct environment. So I've got a pretty, I've got a wet, clean brush. I'm bringing in some blue. Notice I've already, I, I just can't help it. I switch over to my brush, mixing with my brush. You are welcome to do this with a palette knife. I like to do it with a brush. Oops, pull out that extra bristle here. So I'm mixing a kind of light blue sky. And then I'm gonna put my light blue sky kind of right next to my green on the top here. In some places I'm like, hmm, I wanna bring, I wanna bring my tree line down a little bit. So I'm actually bringing my blue. So see how I'm taking the flat edge of the brush, I'm kind of loading it with the paint and I'm coming, I'm kind of dragging right into the tree line. So that's the first thing I'm doing. I'm actually, and then I can go up here if I want to and fill in the top. I mean, obviously this is just practice, but really notice this. I'm not going like uh, this. I'm not coming around the edge, coming in here. I'm not, I'm trying to actually kind of drag a little bit like the way we did the mountains last week, kind of trying to drag in a little bit into the sides. So already I've got a little bit of texture, soft texture happening with my tree line. Okay, so that's the first move we're practicing. Load your brush, mix, right? Mix either with your palette and then pick it up with your brush or mix just straight with your brush. See, I just get sort of impatient and I'm like, I wanna take my brush and mix everything. And then it's this dragging down into the tree line. Your tree line should not be straight across. There should be some dips. Uh, everything should not be even. Bring this down a little bit. There we go. Uh, the less even you make it, the more realistic it looks. So if you have like trees, even if like sometimes that's what it looks like in reality, trees going straight across, I always sort of chop in. So I, so this is how we use like the, the, the soft edge to kind of drag into the dark edge. That's not all we're gonna do, but that's the start. And now I'm gonna clean my brush. Well, you guys practice that. See, I'm getting better. <laughs> not rushing you so much. I want you to send me some pictures of anybody who's feeling uncertain about this or did I get this right? Hey, I sent you where mine is at right now. Let's see. Uh, Rashmi, very nice. Yeah, oh, the yours James, looks really good. Nice, wonderful, wonderful. Love it. You've got it. And look at how you're still paying attention. So you can take this with this tree line, Gene, that's over here. Yeah. You can you can do that same thing. You're gonna do a lot more of like this kind of. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. So Jean, this is not Jean's first rodeo. Jean has um, <laughs> taken uh, painting classes with me for a couple of years now. So uh, so she's now ready to kind of go on and take on new things while still kind of pay paying attention to the technique. Uh, so, Annika, what I like is the softness of your um, yeah. blend here. What's bothering me are these straight lines of blue that you didn't mix in. Okay. So these things coming down are distracting. They, are, they don't look like sky. So what I would do here, I'm going to show you. I'm going to drag in a little bit. Right. So there's a straight line of blue. I'm going to come in and tap it out. See how okay. I'm tapping around it? So get rid of all those straight lines. Okay. Yeah. 
So this is the danger of mixing with your brush. If you don't mix enough, you get these like little stripes of paint that come down and then you got to get rid of them because that because in the sky, they just aren't there. Uh, I Anik, nice, nice. Yep, yep, absolutely. This is absolutely the beginning. This is the beginning. Now these edges are still pretty hard, but there's a little bit of, if you've done this right, which I see you do, there's a little bit of raggedy. So a little bit here, right? I should send a picture of this over. You want that, right? The raggedy? You want that, yes, you want raggedy. You want raggedy, here. I'm gonna send that over. This is mine, and then here it is up close. Yeah, everything is soft, and then you can see it up really close. Oh, Diana. Diana, you're taking a break from Lincoln, or did you finish Lincoln? I'm taking a break from Lincoln. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. If he's driving you crazy. He is. Driving you crazy, I get it. Totally. Um, that's another thing you'll find about painting is that there, you'll as you start to get a sense of the jobs, you're going to realize there are things that you have to be in the right mental state to do. <laughs> that's the best way to put it, right, Diana? Like you have to be, you're like, so if you're painting a lot, you should have several things you're working on so that if you don't feel like doing the detail work, the tedious detail work of like a skyscraper, for example, um maybe getting in the windows or the you take a break from that you do something sort of more loose like this um why not one doesn't always have all right claudia this is way too light your tree line should be very dark so i want you to go back in with your trees uh, otherwise i kind of like the softness that's working but darken your trees this whole thing should be dark there should be no um sort of uh, suggestions in between. Nice, Annika, much better. Excellent, excellent. So, Leon, sorry, a little bit muddle. We should, we, we started with burnt sienna and then we covered it in the whole thing in green. So we are, you know, sky. we're not, we're not painting this right now. This is drying. Oh, we're not painting this. I thought, to put, well, I didn't no, realize I that. this was a, well, I, I, Oh, I know, sorry. I know, but then I, I suddenly <laughs> five minutes ago double guessed myself and said, okay, no, that's don't, not get, don't, don't double guess painting. yourself. So stop working on this right now and just go to a plain sheet. Don't worry, let it dry. We can cover it up. So let it dry and we can cover it up right now. Find a plain sheet to just practice on, Sandra, uh, and put your other thing aside right now. Okay. It's okay. You can't wreck it. There's no way you can really wreck an acrylic painting. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Um, no, 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 I know. Believe me, I've painted 10, I've done 10,000 hours of acrylic paintings and I've made every mistake you've made and more. Um, the nice thing about painting is you can let it, the acrylic and oil paintings, you can let them dry and then extra layers helps. It always helps. So, okay. so we're just practicing here. I just laid this down so that we can start practicing the brush strokes. Uh, all right, so the next thing you're going to do, I'm going to clean my brush off, make sure there's not any blue on it. So I'm dipping it in the water, and then I'm like cleaning it off here. And then I'm going to go back in and grab some of my um, dark green mix. So that means I'm mixing green with either burnt sienna or a red. And I'm going to come in here. So I've got, my brush is pretty dry and I've got like, I, I don't have paint like dripping off, but I've got, I've got paint coverage, pretty full coverage on the edge of the brush. And I'm tapping a little bit up and into the sky. So what I'm trying to do is get rid of all of these, these hard edges here by tapping into them. I'm trying to kind of create a little bit of that. Often that happens by tapping. Sometimes you push up a little bit, but really, and that's how we kind of work this. Oh, I can still see that edge. So I need a little bit of darker. Yep, there we go. I can do a little pushing up in some places. So see, it's all done with this flat edge of this brush. And really, I'm not going everywhere. I'm really looking at where my edges meet. That's where I'm kind of wanting to add my detail. And see, these kind of little floaty bits can be kind of nice. And then the last thing you'll do is you'll load your brush up with that dark green and red. So not green, but green and red, your dark color. 
like this. And you're gonna do a couple of, right sort of towards the top, a couple of, tap in a couple of straight lines, not too many, and then kind of fluff them out using the corner of your, oh, yep, see, I'm gonna make this solid color because I put too many, put too many in here. So I have a few places where the trees are sticking up, but not too many. And this bottom area is really dark. There's no, like, if you look at the source, you'll see there's no spaces between the trees. It's all pretty dark. It's all dark here. Uh, but I'm not really worried about anything more than this edge because this is kind of far away. By the way, Leah, hmm. on the photograph, there is a bit of mountain behind the trees. Are we forgetting that? Or are we going to do it? We're that? forgetting that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. we're forgetting that. Leah? Uh, yeah. yeah, I have just one question. Uh, so mm. uh, you have made the vertical lines with uh, burnt sienna and a mixture of green, right? The green, the dark green that you use for this is what you're doing. So whatever the dark red, I happen to mix this green and this red. You could also do it okay. with this green and this red if you want to. The key here, Needy, to remember is green plus red. Fair enough. So yeah. even the vertical lines um, are a mixture of green and red, whatever yes. red we are yes, using. Yes, yes, it's the dark. All, everything is dark, and right now, all of this is dark. Okay. And that's where we may add more detail back here later, okay. but we don't need, we need to be careful not to add too much, right? Because this is farther away, we can't really see so much, and we don't want to distract from what's happening down here in the, in the field. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, great questions. Uh, and let me take a picture of this Le so you guys can see it. L Leah? Yeah. Uh, can you please uh, show once again, how did you make those uh, single lines at the end? Just once. I just loaded some green and red on my brush, my dark color on my mm -hmm. brush, on the top of my brush, on the tip of my brush like this. And then mm -hmm. I tapped it in like mm -hmm. that. Okay like that. Okay. So there's okay. two different moves you're kind of playing with. One is this kind of tap here, and then one or two of these here. And you don't want too many of these. And notice I'm really working towards the top. I'm not necessarily bringing any of this all the way down. The rest of this is just dark. There's no detail here right now. All of the detail is focused around the edge. Uh, you're going to find you can do, you, you do much less. Uh, nice, Anik. That's pretty. You see how much you can get with very little effort? Do you see how much detail we get with very little effort? That's good. I think this is really fun. Uh, needy, this is, um, yeah, so once again, this is your, so needy, these edges are way too hard. They're way okay. too hard. You need softness, more softness here. You're starting to get there, but tap up above the line in a couple of places. This is, this is too okay. hard. So you want more softness. You don't want these hard edges to be visible between your tree line and your um, blue line, your blue line for the sky. Everything should be soft. So you wanna do a little bit of tapping over the edge over so if you have you have all these hard edges like this i'm going to put them in so you can see you're doing this right now this is what you have right and what sure. i'm telling you to do watch me is kind of tap around the edge so i don't see a firm line it's a little bit more floaty okay yep thank you you're welcome it's okay this is tricky and it's not intuitive. It's not what you think, right? That's why I'm like really pushing this. I don't expect you guys to know any of this, but I wanna emphasize here, I'm gonna take a picture of this. You guys can see it up close. You have to put aside any idea you have of how you think this is supposed to be because you're gonna to focus too much on detail um, and get overwhelmed by all of the detail. 
uh, you're going to start working the detail, you'll make it too big. We don't really need that much. That's why we use a big brush. We just need a few flourishy edges. Um, and this is tricky. It's a, it's a delicate. Uh, Linda, nice, not bad. Not bad at all. Nice, nice. Okay. Excellent. Anybody else? Go ahead and send these in. And then we'll start, I'll, we'll start talking about the lighter mixes in a minute. In fact, I'm going to give you guys one more minute. I'm going to go get a slight refill on coffee and I'll be right back. This is my way of stopping myself from barreling forward with this painting. Mm. Uh, very nice, Emma. I like those soft edges. Oh, oh, good, nice. Yep. See how pretty these are? Look how pretty this is. Look at how pretty, if you stand back, you might look at it close by and think ick, but as you stand back and look at it, you'll, you'll really appreciate how much you can do with very little. So the challenge is I'm using my big brush to create which feels a little out of control, but after a while, you're gonna trust that big brush to create the texture that you want quicker, easier, without having to think about it with only a few strokes. It's nice. Hang on one second. Okay, is everybody ready to start working on grass mixing and brush working? Yes, let's do it. No, yes, no? Yes. Yes, all right. Uh, okay, so you're gonna, every green that you make is gonna start with this dark base. It's gonna start with your green and your chosen red. So you're gonna just keep mixing that dark base in. But to lighten your green, you're gonna add yellow, not white. Hear me now, not white, but yellow. So to make a kind of lighter green, kind of medium to lighter green, you're gonna mix yellow in with your green and your red. See how that starts to look like a pretty color, but we're starting with this same base, the same dark base. So it's just adding yellow to lighten it. Uh, so I wanna show you a couple of things. Here is what I absolutely don't want you to do because it looks ridiculous. <laughs> you probably know because you've all probably tried it. Here I am with a small pointed brush. This is what I've seen a lot of people do at the very beginning. They draw grass like this. Oh, you can't see it here. I'll lighten it even more. Right? Two, three, four. Don't do this. It looks terrible. <laughs> you're not remotely drawing all the grass. Do not think about the grass like this as single individual strands. You're going to think more about light and dark areas. And the other thing I really don't want you to do, and I know you've all done this, once we get to the flowers, don't take your simple brush and go like this. It looks terrible. Just looks like a polka dotted pattern. Don't do that. 
don't do this all the way down. A, don't do this all the way down because um, it makes it look like these flowers are all the same size, right? So we're gonna be getting rid of all of that. I'm just sort of scrubbing it out right now. So you are not gonna be doing that and that's why you're not allowed to have these brushes because I know people are gonna be tempted to do this dot, 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 and it just looks awful. Does not look like what's happening. Uh, so take that out of your mind. Recognize that that is something that instinctively a non-painter, somebody who has not been trained to paint will do. Take that out of your mind because that is not how we're gonna do this. We're gonna do all of this with a big brush. So no dotting, no straight lines, no soldiers, none of that. Once I have my light uh, brush. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my brush fairly dry, and I'm gonna pull in. I'm gonna kind of load my brush, and I want to make sure that my green mix, which has red in it, is light enough so that when I put it next to my tree line, it looks light. And instead of drawing every grass, I'm kind of loading the whole edge of the brush here, and I'm laying in vertical strokes, kind of roughly laying down the field. I'm gonna mix them. See, so I'm out already. I need to mix more. So I'm just going in with my green, my red and my yellow. You're gonna keep mixing. You're not gonna get the same color every time. Don't stress out about that. Uh, nature is not the same color everywhere. So it's actually okay for your color to have some variation. So you're, see how I'm laying this down? See how it's lighter against the dark? So I'm kind of bringing in my grasses down to uh, the side here and then up like this. So if I were to draw a little, since this is just a, a sample, I'll draw a little picture for you in yellow. Kind of stop, don't do this. I'm just showing you where the, light in the the sort of medium grass thing ends. I don't want you to see this line, but I want to show you. See how I'm just kind of fluffing? Fluff, fluff, fluff. And I'm going to take a picture of this so you can see it fairly. I don't want this strong line here. I don't want it. I just want you to see where this dark area kind of comes in. I'm going to take a picture of this so you can really see how this looks. So it's a lot of tapping, right? And see how I start to have this kind of fluffiness, like this kind of variation where some of my darks are coming through. Sometimes in, you'll see when we layer it on the, on the um, when we layer it on the, uh, uh, the, the actual painting, you'll see some of the reds come through too and it's beautiful. So we have these dark greens, some reds coming through. Um, I wanna make sure you understand, I don't wanna see this hard line. So see how I'm coming in to scruff it out so that I don't see, there's not, it gets, goes from light to dark, but I don't have a, a heavy, it goes from light to dark, but I don't have a heavy strong line. I don't have a hard edge, I've got a soft edge. So the important edges here, up here. That's where the focus on the detail goes. And I'm going to show you also my favorite technique. <laughs> so stoked about this. When I learned this, I was like, this is everything. <laughs> Landscape painting and wildflowers. So go ahead and spend a couple minutes here. I'm going to go grab my coffee. I should be back.
Nice, Ani. It's a little bit, yes, although it's a little bit solid, Ani. So work, so make it a little bit scruffier up in here. Yeah. Nice. You get I think it was, uh, the, the brush was too wet, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you want your brush to be drier. So we're doing a little bit, we're doing a little bit of a combination of dry brush, right? And, yep. and then some scrubbing, some sort of uh, blending. I noticed nice. it also gives a very nice effect when the brush is like, you know, uh, uh, still has some this dark paint. Yes, and, and it kind of goes blends towards in the a bottom little bit. And it goes oh. out. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. Um, and by the way, guys, I have a kind of a funny story to tell you. I was, <laughs> which made me really empathetic to what you're all going through as you're doing this. It's easy for me as the teacher to, to say, well, I said that once and blah, blah, blah. You know, why didn't they hear it the first time? And uh, I was driving, my boyfriend and I were driving with uh, a couple of friends visiting wineries. Uh, that's one of the things you can do outside in Oregon. Probably, Emma, a lot like Germany, where, you know, everybody's like outside all the time drinking and just wearing heavy coats and stuff. And so we were driving around and we were trying to get for, Rob was directing, neither of us was driving. Our friend Lori was driving. So he had said something in the scheme of it of like she was like well what exit do i get off of and he said you're gonna want to get off on this exit yada 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 then we talked again and then we went on and, and then after about five minutes i was like oh wait so what exit do we get off of and he said i said that five minutes ago <laughs> i was like oh my god he totally told me and it went completely over my head and all of a sudden i realized jesus my students must feel like this all the time i'm like i said it once I expect you to like hear it or understand it. So do not hesitate to ask me any question, no matter how silly you feel, um, because it's hard to remember everything. <laughs> okay, here, I, uh, here is my silly question. Ask huh? a silly question, sweetie. Yes, when you uh, mix colors, I'm just yes. wondering if you pay attention to uh, for example, uh, green, sienna, and yellow. Do you the order? If I just did oh, like green, yellow, and then sienna, you, you could try pay. that. You could try that to see. I tend to like to mix my base first, uh, the mm -hmm. dark, and then add the yellow to it. Um, but you know, it just depends. Then sometimes, like what will happen is it's more like kind of situational. Like so, let's say I'll start here with green and a little bit of red. And then I add in some yellow and I realize mm -hmm. I don't have enough. So I'll pull in more yellow and then I'll be like, ah, I need more green. And because I have more green, I add in a little bit more red. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I like to start with my base first. Uh, what's nice when we move to oil, if you're going to move to oil, is that you can actually mix a big load of base and it doesn't dry, right? Like it takes three days to dry. But with acrylic, unfortunately, your mix is dry within five or 10 minutes. So um, you can try it, but I like to get the base down first before I lighten it. Uh, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, great question. But you know, you might find your own pattern. You may go back and forth, right? A lot, I do a lot of back and forth as I'm going. But the good thing with not, making a big batch is that you get the variation in the color so that's, that's right that's right because every that, that is absolutely right because every time you mix you're going to have a slightly different green and uh for those control freaks out here are like i want to get my exact same green that's not actually helpful here because we have all kinds of greens happening here so yeah. it doesn't hurt to have a slightly different color it's true pretty much about everything about everything we paint it helps to have different variations of color. Um, uh, and if you feel like there's an area where it needs to be more solidly one color, you'll see that like, eh, if you like, say you work on a painting and then you, you mix it, you can't quite get it. Just laying that full color on top is okay, right? To have like layers on top. All right, so are, so you ready to see the magic of the flowers? <laughs> this is how we're gonna handle flowers going to blow your mind. There are two different techniques here. I want you to watch them both. So we've got a bunch of white wildflowers here. I have cleaned off my brush. It is dry. I'm going to dip it in my white, the top here, and I'm going to tap a little bit off. So I've got kind of white on the tip of my brush. Now we're going to divide this painting into three sections. I'm going to actually mark it with white so that you can see it here. This is of course not what you're going to do, but I'm showing you how things change. 
So back here, we can't really see individual flowers. So you're going to kind of pull in, and it might even feel too big, these kind of streaky lines, skipping, kind of tapping in with your brush, this kind of streaky lines of flowers, kind of like clusters. So back here, we're going to do that. And these whites are too strong right now. So now I'm going to go in with my lighter green, and I'm going to tap on the top, on the bottom. So I can kind of, I can still see the white, but it's less pronounced. So that's all you're going to do back there right? Because this is kind of blurry, should be sort of indistinct. In this section, I'm going to put, I'm going to be a little bit more, I'm going to do a drag and a pull down. Drag, pull down, pull up, baby. Drag, pull down. So see, I've got a little bit more detail. Drag, I don't just have a drag across. I'm also pulling down to create sort of clusters and groups here. So I want my flowers to be a little bit more pronounced. You still might feel like I just laid that down. It looks way too uh, strong. So I'm going back in <laughs> with my light green and kind of tapping over the top of it to kind of make it less pronounced. So in this area, it's just straight kind of drag across and then tap green up into it. Over here, it's drag and pull down, drag and pull down. And then here, <laughs> I love this so much. Sorry, I love this technique so much. Watch it carefully. Okay. Um, you're gonna take with your thumb and your four, your pointer finger, like your gun, like your gun pointing finger. You're gonna pull, you're gonna pull apart. Here, you can see it here if I put it against the dark. I have about four bristles. I have separated from the rest on the side like this. I'm going to go over here, dip uh, into, I want these to be separate actually. There we go. Here, right? So my white. And then I'm going to come here and do a few flower shapes. Not too many. Less is more, right? And I'm not really controlling it very much. I'm just kind of letting the paint. So I'm gonna do a few sort of basic flower shapes using these three, loading it with so much paint. You have to kind of dip it in to the pile there. So no dot, dot, dot. Kind of this scrambly mess. And then I could do the same thing to create a few stems. So I'm going to make a pile of light green I'm going to make a pile of it. Pile up. In fact, I'm going to put a lot of yellow in because that's where, right? I'm going to make a pile of light green and then I'm going to squeeze out the water of my brush and I'm going to once again with my thumb and my forefinger pinch off a couple, uh, maybe two or three bristles. I'm trying to get them. If you have a craft brush, this goes a lot. A raggedy brush is really great for this technique. All right. And then I'm going to scoop in once again, and I'm going to do a few of these. See? Not going one, two, three, but going up, sweeping down coming across, going straight. And that's all you need to do. You, you'd rather us do it with that rather than a minute brush. You will not touch the minute brush. You put that okay. away. <laughs> if you do that with a minute brush, you won't be able to do it. Trust me. Okay. You won't be able to do it. I'll show you what happens when you use a minute brush. It looks awful. This is what happens. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's too strong. 
I want you to, I don't, I want you to have less control, which is what happens when you do this. You can't really control it so much. Ideally, this is how you want it. And you don't do too many, but just a few. So I want you to practice that on your piece. And then we're going to go to our painting and try that on the painting. I'll still walk you through it because I still feel like there's a lot of stuff that's not intuitive, but that's the, that's the way. How is everybody? 